this is Lisa, and you're um, at home with Imagineth, still, again. Um, we're going to do part three of our Dragon Masters, Rise of the Earth Dragon. So again, if you've missed part one and two, go back and find those, because we are going to start right in with chapter 11. Gonna get comfy. Are you comfy? All right. Chapter 11, A Noise in the Night. Ooh, that's a little spooky sound. Good job cleaning worms scales, Drake, Griffith said, walking into the cave. Drake wasn't going to say anything about what worm had shown him. Not yet. But he did have a question for Griffith. How did the dragons get here? He asked. So there's Griffith coming in. The king's soldiers searched far and wide, Griffith replied. It is not easy to find a dragon. Most people have never seen one, but the king did not give up. His soldiers were able to capture these four. But did the dragons want to come here? Drake asked. The king does not always think about what dragons want, Griffith said darkly. Now come, it is time for supper. What do you think Griffith? thinks of King Roland's plans. I think that might have been a little bit of a clue there. After they ate, Bo and Drake went to their room. Bo was teaching him how to write the alphabet. That's pretty cool. Since he hasn't had a chance to learn, now he's going to get a little, a little teaching from his room. Bo drew a capital D and a lowercase d. See, Bo said, the big D looks like a dragon with a big belly. He drew a picture on the paper. Like Vulcan, Drake said with a laugh. Bo laughed too. Moonlight glinted off Bo's dragonstone. It reminded Drake of something he'd wanted to ask Bo about. Do you remember? Does your stone ever glow? Drake asked. Bo shook his head. No, he said. Why do you ask? Oh, look. There they are. Look at the D that looks like a dragon up here. Isn't that cool? So it is kind of unusual for the stone to glow. It's just I thought I saw mine glow once, Drake said, when I was with Worm. That's interesting, Bo said. You should tell Griffith. Drake nodded. Tomorrow, he said. Drake wrote rows of the letter D before he went to sleep. He thought that he would dream of Ds, or maybe of Worm again. But just after he climbed into bed, thump! Drake heard a loud noise. He sat up and saw two figures standing by Bo's bed. Now, if you look closely, who do you think those two figures are? I think I know. I think you've got a bit of a clue over here, too. Chapter 12, our sneaky plan. What's their sneaky plan, do you think? What are they going to do? The two figures turned around. It was Rory and Anna. What do you want? Drake asked. Go back to sleep, Rory snapped. Why should I? He snapped back. Jake, Drake was tired of Rory being so bossy. Yeah, why should he? Bo said. And why are you two here? Anna spoke up. We are going to bring our dragons outside while the rest of the castle is asleep. Do you guys want to come? You can bring Worm and Shu. This is a bad idea, Bo said. No, it's not, Rory said. We're dragon masters. We should be able to take our dragons out whenever we want. Hmm, what do you think? Do you think she's right? Who's right? Is Bo right? Is Rory right? What's Drake going to do? You have a point, Drake agreed. And I do think Worm might like to go outside again. Bo looked worried. What if Griffith finds out? He, he asked. What if the king finds out? They won't find out, Rory said, so long as neither of you say anything. She looked them both in the eye. Well, come on then, said Anna. Drake slipped on his shoes. He followed the others down the hall. The door to Griffith's room was open, and he was snoring loudly. 
Rory put a finger to her lips. As they tiptoed past the door, Drake peeked inside, and the wizard's long beard flew up every time he snored. <laughs> the dragon masters walked down the stairs. The guard in front of the training room door was asleep too. That's Simon, Rory whispered. He always falls asleep. They tiptoed past Simon and into the training room. What good is a guard who falls asleep? The torches were not lit, so the room was black. Rory lit a candle. Then she passed candles to each of them. Now, let's get the dragons, she said, still whispering. Oh, I didn't whisper. Now, let's get the dragons. They reached Vulcan's cave first. Rory opened the gate. Wake up, Vulcan, she said. We're going outside. Grumbling, Vulcan got to his feet. Anna and Bo woke their dragons, and Drake went into Worm's cave. Worm, do you want to go outside? Drake asked. Worm lifted his head. His eyes shot wide open. They stared right at Drake. Drake got a strange feeling. He keeps getting these strange feelings. Come on, Worm, Drake said, but Worm didn't move. He just stared at Drake. Is he trying to tell me something? Drake wondered. Rory, Anna, and Bo walked up to Worm's cave with their dragons. Is Worm coming? Rory asked. Suddenly, Drake froze. He heard words inside his head. Do not go into the tunnel. Ooh, hmm. Words inside his head that he didn't think. Where are those words coming from? I bet you have a pretty good idea. Okay, chapter 13. Trouble in the tunnel. We can't say we weren't warned. Hmm. Did Worm just speak to me through his thoughts? Drake did not know what to think, but he had a feeling those words of warning had come from Worm. Drake, what's the matter? Anna asked. It's, I'm not sure, he said. What would they think if I told them I just heard words in my head? Um, Worm doesn't want to go. He didn't tell them. I think he should have told them. Fine, stay here. Be a big chicken, Rory snapped. I didn't say I was staying, Drake shot back. I'll come along without Worm. As soon as he said it, Worm crawled out of the cave. Look, he is coming with us, Anna said. Drake didn't hear any more words in his head. Maybe... Worm had changed his mind. What do you think, though? I don't know. Worm didn't want Drake to go. Rory led Vulcan forward. Let's get moving! They headed into the long tunnel that led outside. The torches on the walls weren't lit, and their candles weren't doing much to light things up. Capri can light the way, Anna said, but before she could give the command, Rory cried out. Look! Drake craned his neck to look around the dragons in front of him, and then he saw it. A glowing red orb floated toward them. It grew bigger and bigger as it got closer. So an orb is like a sphere, like a round, like a ball, a ball of light. That looks like wizard's magic, Anna cried. But it is not Griffith's magic, said Bo. It feels scary. Just then, Vulcan let out a loud roar. His big tail thrashed back and forth. Calm down, Vulcan, Rory yelled, but her dragon was very upset. Whack, whack, Vulcan's tail banged against the sides of the tunnel. His big body slammed against the walls. Capri and Shu cried out. They both tried to turn back. Only Worm stayed calm. The tunnel began to shake. Dirt fell from the walls. The dragon masters all looked at one another. Run, Drake yelled, but it was too late. The walls caved in around them. <gasps> we gotta get straight to chapter 14, trapped. Drake ducked as the dirt rained down. He, sh he closed his eyes tight, and then the shaking stopped. <sighs> that was a bit stressful. Drake opened his eyes. All the candles had gone out. He looked behind him in the darkness. Worm, are you all right? 
it. Sometimes when I when it gets exciting, I have to read real fast. Worm looked fine. In fact, he didn't have any dust on him. Everybody else was pretty dirty. Is everybody okay? Drake asked. Anna was on the ground. Bo helped her up. I'm fine, she said. That was scary, though. Rory walked over. I'm sorry, she said. I don't know why that weird ball of light made Vulcan freak out. Drake looked around. Thankfully, it's gone now. We should get back, Bo said nervously. Let me see all of them. Are we going to be able to get back? Drake looked past Worm. The tunnel was blocked with dirt, with rocks and dirt. I don't think we can, he said. The way outside is blocked too, Rory said. We're trapped, said Bo. He turned pale. Anna's dragon made a sad sound. Mm. It's okay, Capri, Anna said, stroking Capri's snout. Can you give us some light, please? Capri opened her mouth and a beautiful white ball of light came out and the light hung in the air. That's cool. Like that. It's neat that she's, I guess she's a light dragon. Whoa, something crazy is gonna happen here. Vulcan is strong, Rory said. He should be able to push through those rocks. Vulcan was calmer now that the red orb was gone. He pushed at the rock wall, but the rocks didn't budge. See that? Come on, Vulcan, Rory urged him, but Vulcan couldn't break through. Bo spoke up. I could have shoe blast through the rocks with water. Anna frowned. What if it doesn't work? Then the tunnel will fill with water. Good point. Everyone was quiet. And then Anna, they knew Anna was right. They were stuck. Drake looked at Worm. Sorry I got you into this, he whispered. Then Worm's green eyes started to glow. A green light swept from the top of Worm's head down to the end of his tail. Oh, that's so cool. Can you imagine that green? Kind of like glow in the dark green his head looks really cool. He looks really cool. Drake jumped back. Worm? He felt something warm on his chest. He looked down to see that his dragon stone was glowing too. Can you see that? Anna, Rory and Bo's mouths dropped open. They stared at Worm and Drake. Worm's green glow filled the tunnel. Drake, it, it looks like your dragon is going to explode, Rory yelled. Is he? Is that what's going to happen? Here we go. Chapter 15 is called Worm's Surprise. I knew Worm had a power. Worm is cool. Worm didn't explode. Instead, the dragon closed his eyes. Then the rocks blocking the tunnel began to shake. What's happening? Bo yelled. Is Worm doing that? Asked Anna. I, I think, I think he's using the power of his mind, Drake said. He wasn't sure how he knew, he just did. Rory, Anna and Bo stepped back. The rocks kept shaking, then poof. The rocks broke up into tiny pieces. Rock dust filled the air, and Drake coughed, <coughs> waving the dust away with his hand. <coughs> All of the fallen rocks were gone. The tunnel was clear again. Drake hugged Worm. You did it, Worm! Worm saved the day. We should get out of here. <clears throat> we should get out of here before Vulcan sneezes from all this dust, said Rory. The last time he sneezed, he turned my bread into toast. Rory's right, said Bo. Let's get out of here. Drake stepped through the pile of rubble and found himself face to face with Griffin. Trouble. You are all in big trouble, the wizard said. The whole castle is awake and King Roland is furious. Yikes. One chapter to go. I think we can do it. Chapter 16. Just the beginning. Think of a new name for the end of a book. 
The group walked back through the tunnel in silence. Six of the king's guards were waiting for them in the training room. One stepped forward as soon as they entered the room. King Roland wants a report, he barked. The dragon masters all looked to Griffith. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> Please tell King Roland that everything is fine, he said. The dragons tried to escape, but the dragon masters stopped them. But Drake started to speak, but something about Griff Griffith's look told him to stay quiet. Did Griffith just lie? He did. He's kind of protecting the dragon masters. The soldier nodded to Griffith. Very well, he said. Then the soldiers and Simon left. Do you remember the Simon, the guard? Drake turned to Griffith. But the dragons didn't do anything wrong, he said. Rory stepped forward. Drake's right. This was my fault. I wanted to take the dragons outside, she said. She turned to the dragon masters. I'm sorry, it was a bad idea. That's kind of cool. That's Rory taking responsibility. Maybe I kind of like her after all. Agreed, said Griffith. Now tell me, how did you all get out of the collapsed tunnel. Worm saved us, Rory cried. Anna nodded. He glowed all green. It was amazing. And he turned the rocks to dust, Bo added. Yep. They're all pretty proud of Worm. The wizard's eyes lit up. That's excellent. He grabbed Drake by the shoulders. I knew you could bring it out of him. Earth dragons, I would have worn as an extra. Earth dragons have great power, Griffith said. Worm has been hiding his power until now. He glowed because he was using it. Is that why my dragon stone glowed too, Drake asked. No, the stone glows when you have a strong link with your dragon, Griffith said. The link is strong when you and your dragon can read each other's thoughts. It will happen to the other dragon masters too, in time. Mind reading? Wow. Drake remembered the words he had heard in his head. It was Worm. Thank you, Worm, he said, stroking him. You really saved us today. Wait! We forgot to tell you about the red ball of light, Rory piped up. That was what scared Vulcan. When it flew into the tunnel, he panicked and made the tunnel collapse. A cloud came over Griffith's face. Are you sure that you saw a red ball of light? All four dragon masters nodded. This is serious, Griffith said. Danger may be heading our way. Danger? Bo asked. Griffith patted Bo's head. For now, we are safe. Let's all get some sleep. As Drake led Worm back to his cave, he felt a strong connection to his dragon. He wasn't going back to the onion fields. This was his life now, a life full of dragons and magic and danger. He was a dragon master. And there he is. So, remember when he was worried that he wouldn't belong? He does belong. And that kind of leaves you on a little bit of a cliffhanger, right? It kind of leaves you wondering what's going to happen in book number two. So there's, I think, 11 or 12 of these books, so you can check them out. They're pretty good. All right, thanks for reading with me today. Um, I'll see you next time.